Hey folks, Curtis Stone here. We're going to carry on our video series. We're exploring all the states and provinces of North America, looking at each of them and considering places that uh, would be good places to hunker down for a homestead and places that you might want to avoid. Today we're going to look at the state of New Hampshire, the, the free state of New Hampshire as they call it. And um, New Hampshire is a pretty nice state actually. It's a it's uh, boreal and somewhat temperate. You get you get precipitation in the summer. Um, it has a fairly low population. There's lots of rural areas. It's very green. Um, you've also got you know the politics are better than most states. I would probably say there's a bit more freedom in New Hampshire than uh, a lot of other states, especially the states around it. Uh, very similar if not exactly the same as Vermont, pretty much. Very, very similar situation. Maybe not politically, but as far as what you can do here, the climate regions, the flora and fauna, you know, what you would kind of, um, the, the things that you would consider, um, you know, all very similar in these regions. Um, you know, the New England area, I guess, as they call it. Very similar. Um, New Hampshire's got a lot of great spots. So, Let's talk about places to avoid. Definitely down in the lower uh, southeastern quadrant, you know, approaching Boston and, and such. These are highly populated. I wouldn't want to be anywhere in here. I would probably want to be up in at least the center of the state or further north. I'm just going to turn off some of my... These roads are a bit annoying. There we go. And so there's a ton of green. You know, but you probably, you know, you got winters out here. You got that Atlantic um, element where you can get some huge snowfalls. But, you know, other than that, it's a, it's a pretty nice state. Up here, there's, it's beautiful. There's beautiful regions up here. Uh, very similar experience is uh, in Canada, but less populated. You know, most of Canada is just right along the U.S. border. And you can see this illustrated very well here. When you look at Quebec, you know, a lot of people want to be like these. This is a very nice region of of Quebec. And just look how much more stuff there is than here. You know, when you're up here, it feels like the end of the world. The the edge of the world in the United States is there's there's very little population. Um, it's very rural. You know, there's small towns around. But that's what you want to consider is. Uh, if you're going to be up in these areas, where are you going to do your your sort of day to day shopping? You know, where are you going to go into town when you need things? Uh, what's that going to look like? So, you know, we just kind of circled these regions here. They've got medium sized towns around them. So let's just say down here towards this area with Le Lebanon and, and Hanover, uh, Hartford. I think Hartford's in, in Vermont. But, um, you know, if you were in these regions, you would be commuting to these towns. And th these are beautiful areas. I mean, what's nice about this is there's no big ag here. There's agriculture, but this is mostly going to be just hay cropping, alfalfa, stuff like that. It's fa fairly benign agriculture. There's no big ag. So that's really nice. Um, it's better for your health to not be near big ag. So in, an, in a region like this, you've got a, a lot of selection of little to medium sized towns that you could get the things that you need um, on a weekly basis in. Um, up here in this region, a little bit less towns, but you know, you can see we've got some sort of population areas in here, but not uh, not massive population centers, not like as you approach, say, Boston, which is a massive uh, area, uh, Manchester, Concord, Dover, Portsmouth, these are more populated. Now, again, when we put these red circles on here, we're not saying don't ever consider living in here. We just put them as fields of interest. It's a 50 kilometer, a 50 mile radius around a metropolitan area. So I'm not saying don't avoid living in here because it might make sense. You might find some nice spots up in here closer to these towns. It's not that bad. Just you want to make sure that you're not on any major highways. That's key. 
when it comes to homesteading is you're not off the major highways. Your homestead isn't visible from the major highways. And even even closer to that, some of the minor highways too. So you've got your interstates here. You've got some of your state highways here. You don't want to be on a state highway. But to be an off-road on a state highway, not so bad. Uh, I would generally stay as far as possible away from interstates because they're just huge. There's just so much traffic. You know, people commuting down towards Boston or, or wherever. Um, you would, you don't want to be near those highways. But you might actually find that, you know, there's parts in here that might make sense to be in. So again, don't get totally hung up on this 50 kilometer thing. I would definitely say don't be 50 kilometers outside of Boston and Salem and places like that for sure. Stay away, or 50 miles. Stay away from uh, those areas. But, um, you know, you might find some decent spots up in here, kind of out, you know, mostly out of the way. And as long as you're not on major highways, that's key. Um, you could live up in a place like this and up in the, up the northeastern quadrant of the state. And you might find that you go to Quebec for some things. Um, you know, you're, you're probably closer to uh, Montreal than you are... Boston, and so if you needed to get a ton of stuff, or say not Montreal but Sherbrooke, that's a that's a, a fairly decent sized Quebec town. You might find that it's easier to go to a town like that, especially in the United States, with the U.S. dollar being so much valued higher than the Canadian dollar, that uh, that actually makes economic sense um, because there is a lot of amenities up in here. So if you're going to live up in the North Quadrant, there's very little here. Um, these towns, you know, they have got amenities though. They service people, but these are pretty small towns. So, you know, if I were to live in New Hampshire, I'd probably be looking at this region here somewhere where I'm far enough from the major metropolitan hubs, but close enough if I need to access them that I could go to them. Um, you know, even, uh, Burlington is a decent sized town in Vermont. You might find that you're commuting into Vermont for things here and there. Montpellier is a really cool town. I've been there before. Um, but yeah, I mean, what else to say, uh, about New Hampshire? You know, it's a, it's a, there's not a ton of people there. It's got low population. It's, um, it's a nice climate. It's probably much of this is going to be zone four, USDA zone four. Um, certainly the closer you get to the ocean, you might be a little bit higher. You might get to a zone five. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very similar to upstate New York, Vermont, Maine, much of the same climate, Connecticut, Massachusetts too, though I don't know if I would be homesteading in these places, but we will look at them. Um, but yeah, that's some food for thought when you're thinking about New Hampshire. If you guys like these videos, check out the link that I have in the video here taking you to a, web a free web class where I'll show you how you can uh, find a good homestead property. I'll show you some of the, the tips and tricks that I use for Google Earth and uh, how you can eliminate, you know, getting yourself into situations where you're spending a lot of time viewing properties and, and wasting time driving. And that's what this is all about is using these tools to save you time looking um, at, uh, at places. So check that video out. There'll be a link in the show notes here. See you in the next one.